I'm Mike Forster. I'm Dean of the College of Health at the University of Southern Mississippi. And today we're kicking off a uh, series of interviews with students, faculty, staff, alumni from throughout the college or across the college um, to help us gain perspective on health education at Southern Miss as well as to highlight some of the accomplishments and uh, educational achievements of our students, staff, alumni, and others. Our first interview is with Mason Mull, who is a speech and hearing sciences uh, student within the College of Health and a recipient, recipient of the, a presidential scholarship awarded him by the Honors College, uh, funded by USM uh, alumnus and College of Health Dean's Council member Beverly Dale. So, Mason, welcome. Thanks. It's good to have you here today. Good to be here. Yeah. Um, might be helpful if you just tell us a little bit about you and maybe tell us how you decided to come to the University of Southern Mississippi. Well, um, I just remember I was a senior in high school and uh, you know, I took a tour here and I absolutely loved it. Um, they told me about the presidential scholarship, and um, at that time, <clears throat> my ACT wasn't where it was where it needed to be to qualify for it. But I thought, hey, maybe if uh, maybe if I you know get a you know the, the grade that I need, um, that I could uh, try out for it, you know, and see where that goes. And thankfully, I got the grades that I needed, and uh, one thing led to another, and um, I, I wound up here where I wanted to be with the presidential scholarship. So I'm really blessed and thankful for that. Mm -hmm. What's hometown for you? Uh, Purvis, Mississippi, yeah. Okay, so didn't have to no. come too far. No, just from the corner. Say. Yeah, good deal. And where did you went to Purvis High? Uh, Lamar Christian School. Lamar Christian yeah. School. Okay. So um, you are currently a student junior yes. in the Department of Speech and Hearing yes, Sciences. Sir. Did you know coming in to college that that's the direction you wanted to go? I did not know what I wanted to do. I thought maybe I wanted to maybe uh, pursue a career in dentistry, so I thought right. maybe I should major in biology, but you know, after a few classes I realized that probably wasn't what I really wanted to do, so I looked into uh, speech pathology and audiology, and it really interested me, mm -hmm. and um, I wanted to be in a field that gave back to people and just, mm -hmm. it was more of like a serving field, you know, like pretty much all of the majors in the College of Health, it's just something that you're giving back to people, and mm -hmm. um, that's that's really where I, st I started off. Mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. so somewhere along the lines, just looking at different program options, right. things that were available, mm -hmm. and something attracted you yeah, really to that. Took some mm -hmm. courses, things went well. Really enjoyed it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in that program, you you declare the major um, at any point um, in your academic career, or do you have to? at a certain point have to be formally admitted to the program? Well, I just remember freshman year, uh, I told them, hey, I, I want to be part of this you know, program, and they said, sure. And right, so there's no formal admission not to that the I department. Know, no. Okay, some of, some of the professional programs have that, not, not all do. Okay, so when would you be expecting to, uh, to graduate from Southern Miss? Uh, well, initially it was May of 2014, but I may be here just a little bit longer to finish off some classes that I need to get off. Uh huh. So. Sure. You don't want to miss any classes that you need. No. <laughs> <laughs> what would you like to do with uh, with your degree? Um, you know, I've asked, I was actually thinking about that today. Um, I would. I, I'm thinking about joining the military once I. Uh, well, I'm, I want to be uh, an audiologist, so uh -huh. I have to go to graduate school. Mm -hmm. So about four more years of school. I don't know where, you know, mm -hmm. possibly Southern Miss if I'm accepted here or another graduate school. But afterwards, I'd, I'd like to join the military, possibly the Navy, and mm -hmm. uh, maybe pursue a career there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One of the great things about the, the field of audiology is that uh, it, it is applicable pretty much right. any place. And yeah. you can go, certainly there are military applications, but clinics. There's yeah. lots of them. Yeah, there's lots of options. And lots of need. Definitely. As well, particularly with an aging population. Absolutely. Do with a lot of the uh, noise pollution that we're yeah, exposed it's, it's to. Yeah, this generation, you know, there's going to be a big need for a lot of music real, we're listening to. It's really right. a, a growing need. I won't ask you what kind of music you like to listen to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little bit of everything, just too loud. Yeah. yeah, so your experience, in, and obviously this is a little bit tendentious question, but your experience in the College of Health has been a good one. 
Definitely. I'm very satisfied, I'm very happy, and I wouldn't trade it for anything. Mm -hmm. you, do you have a good relationship with uh, your advisor? With Absolutely. Uh, Dr. Cloud is the uh, chair of the speech and hearing department, and um, I regularly visit him and have a chat with him every now and then, and I like to chat with all of my uh, professors, and everybody's just real real nice over there, and uh, my honors uh, advisor, Dr. Corey, she's been really helpful to me, and yeah. everybody over there is just really professional, and it's, it's a class A yeah. program. Very good to hear that. I mean, it's one of the things that we are committed to in the college. We like students to feel that they're connected and that the doors are open for Absolutely. faculty and administrators. And that's, that's so. quite apparent. That's terrific. Um, I know, I happen to know that you're also interested in doing research. Yeah, I am, <laughs> right. <laughs> How did you know? Uh, Mason is uh, an honors college student and uh, committed to graduating with Latin distinction, which means you uh, are preparing to do a thesis Absolutely. and a piece of research. Well, yes, why don't you say just a little bit about what your research interests are? Um, I've always been fascinated with traumatic brain injuries. Um, I'd like to know more than I do. Um, it's just one of those... Uh, one of those accidents that's really prevalent in our society. Um, it started off with an interest. This, I go back with the military. You know, my, my father's in the military, and so I have a heart for the military. I just like to mm -hmm. do anything that I can to, to uh, serve them, what they do for us. So uh, um, I, was, I was hoping to be able to pursue a line of research having to do with military traumatic brain injuries, but there's really no information out there. So um, I changed it to children since. As you said, audiology and speech pathology is really broad. You, you mm -hmm. can practice it in a lot of ways as far as you know, hospital settings, military settings, school settings. So uh, I'm pursuing, um, I'm looking at uh, traumatic brain injury in schools and how speech pathologists, how, how ready and comfortable they feel treating and dealing with children with traumatic brain injuries. Because mm -hmm. it's really, it can be a really tricky and sensitive subject and it, it requires a lot of skill mm -hmm. and um, I'm just really interested to see what they have to say about it. Mm -hmm. yeah. so. and, and I think when you say that about the earlier point you made about being able to give back and you know really reach out, help and yeah. provide service to people that yeah. need things. I'm hoping that my, maybe my sub, uh, my uh, thesis you know, topic, maybe some speech pathologists that, you know, um, that see it will reevaluate how much they know and hopefully want to pursue more knowledge and education about it. You know, right. know more about traumatic brain injuries. Right. You know, one of the things that we're committed to, and I know the university is, is very much committed to as we move forward, is the idea that um, all of our students really need to have some experience with the, the research process and right. understand the importance of making a contribution to the knowledge base Absolutely. and helping to grow that. It's not just for PhDs to go do that, but everybody to learn something about it. And as professionals, because um, I know you're going to be a great audiologist someday, you're going to want to be uh, connected with the literature as it evolves and be able to use the best evidence Absolutely. to ground your practice. And that's, that's another, I think, feature of um, the college as a whole and what students get exposed to. Absolutely. It's a good thing. Um, if, let me put you on the spot a little bit, if you were um, helping us recruit students, and we'd love for you to help us recruit, well, everybody should be recruiting students. Absolutely. If you were visiting a high school, say, to talk, you know, on a, sort of a careers day sort of thing, um, what would you tell them about the College of Health? I would look at them, and I give them that finger, like Uncle Sam. I said, "We want you." <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I would tell them that in the College of Health, like I said at the beginning, um, any of these majors you know that you can pursue through the College of Health are all ser sor service oriented. They deal with people serving others. I mean, um, you know, I know there's nutrition, social work, speech and hearing sciences, among others. And um, they all just, they're, they're service oriented. Mm -hmm. And they're, they, they're all about helping others. Mm -hmm. And um, there's just nothing more rewarding than not focusing on yourself and just you know, focusing your career and focusing your life on improving the lives of others around you. Mm -hmm. And I just can't think of a better and more fulfilling life mm -hmm. than the one spent giving mm -hmm. back. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's certainly a great way to, to approach uh, your career. Thinking about your career, let me just mention one other thing. You can make a pretty good living 
<laughs> I hope to. Um, you can make a pretty good living in the health professions. Absolutely. Um, you will be able to pay your mortgage. And that and you might be able to afford a nice little sports car, a little um, smart car, you know. Yeah, and when the kids start coming, all that kind of stuff. You College. Know, you, 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 will, Absolutely. you will be able to make a living. You'll be comfortable. Um, now, of course, I hope in your case you won't have to be paying off student loans. Hopefully not. I don't expect to, you know, but, you know, if I do, I know I'm in the right profession where it won't take too long. That's definitely, I think, one of the advantages of having one of these significant scholarships like the president. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think about that all the time. Sure. And, and it's, we, we'd love to be able to award more of those to more, more deserving students. Um, I know, because we've chatted about it a little bit, you have not had the opportunity uh, to meet uh, Dr. Beverly Dale. I have not. Yes. Uh, yeah, the donor who supports the scholarship. Is that something you would uh, look forward Absolutely. to Absolutely. I would okay. love to meet her and just get to know her more. Yeah. She's in town from time to time, so the next time she's in town, we're going to try and get you guys Absolutely. together. So Absolutely. I think she'd be excited about what you're thinking about, what you would like to do. Absolutely. I'd love and, to talk to and her. And I think you'd find her to be quite inspirational. Definitely. She's a, she's a terrific lady. Okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. It's been good to talk to you. It's been good talking to you too, sir.